this video, I'm going to cover a basic Cloud Spanner setup on my App Engine Java project. So I'll start off by initializing the spanner for the project. I'll create a table in the Cloud Console. Then I'll write to the table from a servlet and read from the servlet as well. So to get started, I want to go to the Cloud Platform Console and I'm going to look for a spanner. Once I get to the spanner settings, I want to create an instance. So to create an instance, I've already defined a name in my template configurations, which I'm going to use in here in a moment. So I don't have to remember all these steps. I'm going to go back and paste it in. I'm going to call my instance Donaldson dash dev testing and same for the ID. So I'm going to select a US one central configuration with one node. So by the way, the cost of this per hour is 90 cents. So I, suggest that you'd be a professional because once you hit this it'll start billing your account or at least registering on the spreadsheet of it and then bill you later so to get started i'm going to go create so now i have one node or one instance created i want to create a database on this instance so i'm going to create a database and then i'm going to go to my template directions again and copy the database dash db which i'll be using for my database id so i'll click on continue and define a database schema you could define it by adding text like sql but i'm going to go ahead and add a table and do this step-by-step uh, -step process so for the table name i'm going to name it users and then i'll click on continue and for columns i want to name it id uh, and that'll be an int and I'll be done. And then on another column, I want to name age. That'll be int and that'll be done. And I want another column, I'll name this name and that'll be a string and that will be done. So out of these three columns, I'm gonna use the ID as the primary key. So I'm gonna go select continue and then a single column ID will be my primary key. So now I can add my table and the table has been added to the database and you can see users here and I can go back and edit it. So I'm gonna create this table and here we have the table, we can click on it and here's the schema for it. Here's my primary key, this is the ID and another int for, or int data type for age and string data type for name. So the next step I want to do is wire it up. But before that, let me just review the terminal context configuration for this project. So I'm using Donaldson and Donaldson, I want to set up the credentials for my system so I do not have to hard code them in my servlet. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the terminal. I've already talked a little bit about this in a previous video. So for terminal, I'm gonna use gcloud init to reinitialize my cloud my cloud context or cloud configuration so for this i'm going to hit one for reinitialization and once that i'm going to use my email that i used before and then i'm going to select the project number three which is donaldson 53958 which you can see the the project name up here in the cloud console and i'm going to hit three Okay, so now I'm all set up for the credentials to work for that project in the apps that I'm working. It hooks up the OAuth. So let me go to, this, to the IDE where I'm gonna be editing the configuration. So here I've created in the previous episode, I created a servlet or I imported the servlet, hello world servlet, and it has a one servlet and it's at the root. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy this and create a new one. And so what I'll do is I'll create, uh, go Command C for copy and then Command V for paste. And then I'm just gonna call this users servlet. Once I've created the user servlet, let's go into that class by opening it up. Now I don't need hello world. So let's just get rid of some of the metadata they used for the docs. And then we're gonna define the name of the servlet because we don't have to do this in web XML. We're gonna define it here. So let's go users and the name will be users. So if the person visits localhost forward slash users, they should load this servlet and its output. So if we print, okay, users. Okay, so now that we have the servlet set up and configured, let's just test it by right clicking and run Jetty Run, just like we did in the previous episode. So we know that the, 
this servlet will be working. So debug as run jetty. So this is run jetty run. And then what we'll do is go down and just verify there's no exceptions thrown in the console. So it's running on localhost 8080. So I'll go back to the browser, open up a new tab and go localhost 8080. So there we go at root. So let's go to the users. Um, okay, so the user servlet is loading. So the response is working from that servlet. So let's go back to the IDE. The next step is let's go to my template directions. And what we want to do is create a spanner service. So I'm going to create, just paste this in. We'll work this down a little bit. Okay, so my spanner service. I'll do an auto import. So spanner and the create service. And what does that mean? So let's copy that method, create spanner service. And this is basically what sets up the service and the credentials. It wires it in the background. I don't have to hard code credentials here, as if you can see. So now I've created the spanner service. Now let's create a DB client to find the instance and the database that I want to access and write data to. So I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to do auto import and it fills uh, auto imports the data types. So now that I have the create DB, so let's just do the instance. Uh, I got a. I'm going to copy this. So I'll add the source to the link below so you can click and get the entire servlet and copy that for your for your leisure. So I'm going to paste in the database client. So now we have the credentials and service created. Now we have the client ID our client DB connected. So that means I'm connecting to dev testing and the database Donaldson DB. And you can see get database client and the database options are defined there. So the next step, let's go to training. I'm going to cover over this quickly. So the write test, which I'm going to do next. So let's go to the right because we want to write data to it to start with. So I'm going to copy this write method that I've already created in a template. And then I want to paste that method down, down below. So this is the next next one i'm going to go auto imports and this time it wants me to define because there's a couple names so that would be cloud spanner and cloud spanner mutation so now that i've created this spanner write test it takes a database client this database client is used to create a read write transaction and in that read write transaction i use an anonymous class here that's called transaction callable and it provides the transaction instance. This transaction instance, I actually create a mutation new insert builder. And there's new in, new update builder for updating an item in the or an up updating a record. So for this record, let's do the ID as one name Brandon age 41. Okay, so that will create a record in my database. So let's just do, we'll call write. Okay, what did I name it? Spanner write test. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so now we can write data to the database. So let's save it. We'll restart the servlet or App Engine project. Now that App Engine is running, let's go to the browser and open up the browser. Okay, so if it returns, it just takes a moment to initialize the first connection to the database. Okay, so now it should have written to the database. Let's go check the database. Let's go to query and we'll go select star from users and we'll run the query. Okay, there's the first record I inserted into the database. So let's go back and just define update and update this record instead of adding it. So we'll go update and it's okay. So we're all legit there. So we got the ID is one and we'll name Brandon two to show an update. We'll go back, whoop, refresh the wrong window. We'll reload this context and it looks like it's finished. So I'll go back to the cloud platform and just run the query again select star from users i already I refreshed it so it went away there we go brandon too it was updated so let's just review that real quick so the first method i called was new insert builder the second method was new update builder 
So now let's read this out in the servlet. So I've got a template already created for that. So that is spanner read test. And if I copy and paste that in, I'll paste it in at the bottom here because we we had some data right to the database. Now we're going to fill auto import, which is okay. Google Cloud Spanner result set. I'm just making sure I pick the right ones, the right imports. Okay, spanner read test. I'm going to go up after I call that spanner read test. This time I'm going to send the print writer into the spanner read test, provide that in the parameters of the method. So here we go. We're going to have a result set. This is going to be a single use result set, and we're going to define our query as select one. Well, that's not what I want. I won't actually want select star from users. So instead of select star from users, let's say select name from users. So for that, this will be a single use result set, and then we'll iterate through the result set. We'll say result set next, and then for each item in that result set, let's go, instead of get long, because it was one before, get string, and get string, and we'll say the column, in, in, column index of zero, because that'll be the first item in my select statement list. And this, we're gonna go, we need to replace that too, because that was something we need to change as well. So it goes to system out. Actually, let's just delete system out, make it a little bit simpler. And we're gonna do basically servlet out, right to, well, right out to the response, and that should show up in the browser. Okay, so now we'll save this. We'll, oh, let's restart it. It wants me to restart it for some reason. Okay, so now that it's restarted, let's load the browser up. And this time we'll refresh the context, the user servlet, and it'll initialize. And then we should see Brandon, the name, show up. There it is, Brandon too. Okay, so let's just run an update and, and write to the out at the same time. So let's go to the Eclipse. And this time we'll update put three I actually let's say um, land in land in okay so land in and then we'll say okay so we'll save this go back reload the page and there it is it wrote to the database we can go to the database and just say run query and see what happens here okay there it is land in so let's review the steps that I went through to set up the cloud spanner database okay so I'm gonna go to the to the cloud span, I'll go to the root of the cloud platform. In the root of the cloud platform, I went to the spanner and the index or navigation. I created an instance called Donaldson Dev Testing. And this is just a reminder, when you initialize an instance, it'll start adding charges to your account each hour. All right, so then I've created a database in this and this database was Donaldson DB. So I can click on Donaldson DB in the tree over here. And I have a users table that I created an ID, which is a unique primary key, and an age and a name. So then I went into my IDE. So in the servlet, I'm gonna minimize that, that view, the console view. I created a servlet called users, and that users loads up on the page users. And in the request of the do, do get request, I created a spanner instance and the initial the credential credentials are initialized in the terminal using using the G Cloud client and the cloud SDK tools. And I showed how to do this in another episode. And then I created a database client. I used that database client to write to the database which I use a mutation, and that mutation was either a new insert or new update builder. And then once I did that, I created a spanner read test. And then for the statement, I have a simple select statement, SQL select statement. And I iterate over the records, and I, of course, write out to the response. So this concludes the basic configuration of setting up the Cloud Spanner for a Google App Engine Flex project or basically an App Engine standard project. So thanks for watching today and follow me for more tips and tricks on the cloud and I'll catch you later.